It's time to mind your business with me, Jamila Lodge. Tune in to find out how to mind your business with BEDC, special guest entrepreneurs, industry experts, and more. Brought to you by BEDC. Bermuda business starts here. Ray, welcome back to Mind Your Business. Thank you, Jamila. It's <laughs> great to be here. Yes. And so you were my former colleague. Mm-hmm. You are now um, formerly the director of the micro, small, and medium enterprise unit at BDC. Now you are a consultant to BDC because you have left us to go pursue your own entrepreneurial endeavors, which are fabulous. That's what it's about. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about the fact that you will be facilitating our Think Like an Entrepreneur course, mm-hmm. which, of course, you've done right. previously. Um, so we just want to talk about the course, what people can expect to receive, and what you're going to bring, what your je ne sais quoi is going to be for the upcoming course. So um, first of all, tell us what you're doing now. What are you doing now? So um I, as many may know, I have a background as, as an entrepreneur. I've been, I work for myself for, for uh, I guess, dating myself, probably about 25 years. Okay. Um, so even while at BEDC, I continued some of those endeavors, uh, one of which was my charter business. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I do uh, coastal cruising mm-hmm. and uh, party charters uh, on the weekends, and now that's turned into a full-time thing. Mm-hmm. So... Um, it's been great because, uh, interesting enough, for me, some of the uh, foundations of discovery mm-hmm. actually happened while I was uh, teaching this course for BEDC, as, as I was always looking to uh, pivot, if mm-hmm. you will. So um, so I've talked about my charter business in my course before, Okay. and it's kind of great to look back at some of those notes and see how I can apply them to where I'm at now and where I'm going mm-hmm. and make that also a part of the journey that will uh, hopefully occur with some of the students who will sign up for Think Like an Entrepreneur. Yes, I love it. I mean, I was talking with another entrepreneur about the fact that it's easy to teach people and say, this is what you should be doing, but it's so much better when you when you know that the person that you're talking to has gone through that process or been there, done that, if that makes sense. So with with you as a captain of Mona Lisa Cruises, you can actually, like you said, apply some of the, the foundational uh, discussions through the course to your actual business and then also incorporate that in your teaching of the class, which I think is way more impactful than if you were just speaking wax and poetic, if you will, <laughs> about hypotheticals. Um, so you could actually apply some of the lessons that are being taught in the in the course. So Think Like an Entrepreneur is, a, I would say it's a foundational course, yes. would you say so? Yes, v- very much so. It's, it's a course that allows one to, uh, I guess, get into depth of what their idea is. Okay. And, um, you know, what is the problem? How are you planning to solve it? And then, you know, and then some of the suggestions going forward. So with a lot of people, they, they have a an idea, mm-hmm. but have they really researched that idea? Have they actually tested some of that theory? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and many who are, have an idea may not have done so, but that's the whole objective of the course, right? right. It's not just to have an idea, uh, but to actually do some of those things that get you started. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, one of the things that was always interesting to me about Think Like an Entrepreneur, which uses the Ice House curriculum, mm-hmm. is just that, right? Many times in business, and particularly working here at BEDC, the goal is always to create a business plan yes. that you then use and develop and grow. Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes that can take a lot longer than most people really understand. Mm-hmm. And I've seen many a people who come with a great idea, but they give up because they can't write the plan. Mm. And and I think one of the things that's really cool about Think Like an Entrepreneur is it encourages you more to give it a shot and get started right. than getting to the finish line with a business plan or the perception of getting to the finish line with writing a business plan before you start. Right. So um, so that's one of the really nice things, you know, I think it it should help people to, you know, think about those things that uh, they can't necessarily put on paper mm-hmm. um, in, in a formal setting, but make it a little informal where you try it, you get to meet some of your potential customers, you get to, you know, 
think more about the product and service that you plan to order mm -hmm. and, and do it and, and do it in a format that sets the foundations for that plan uh, that you would still be, you know, uh, need to write at need some, to write point. At some yeah. stage, <laughs> but, um, but get you started. Right. And I think that's a good point because sometimes we see people, right, they just start doing it mm -hmm. and they think about the plan later. So I think the combination of the just do it and putting to plan together is really the winning combination. And that was the logic behind the order in which we offered our multi-week courses, yes. right? Because this Think Like an Entrepreneur course is really about validation and feasibility, if you will, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So would somebody actually pay me for whatever I'm offering, right? Are they going to take my charter boat or not? And so the only way to know is to put it out there. And see what happens. No, that's that's so true. And and also do it in a in an area in a space where hopefully you haven't invested too much money and time before you actually get some of that feedback. Yes. Um, you know, there are certain industries where uh, you know, you can you, you may re be required mm -hmm. to uh, you know, have a pretty substantial financial outlay mm -hmm. to get that business going, right? Even if it's simple as a retail store. Well, you know, to find that out that it's not what people want after you've secured a lease, after you've paid to set that place up, after you've done all the requirements mm -hmm. to put yourself into business may not necessarily be the route to go. You know, mm -hmm. you could have started out as a vendor, for example, right. and, and and created some buzz and some momentum with that. You could start out online, mm -hmm. you know, which has definitely been some of the uh, pivots we've seen with the pandemic, for mm -hmm. example. So that's that's it. It's, it's really about getting started, mm -hmm. no matter what that industry is, and applying some of the, the thought processes towards that uh, with this throughout this course. You know what I find interesting, too, because from we've been offering the course for for years I, mm -hmm. I can't count how many years now but some of the feedback from people taking the courses is that even though they may have taken it they would take it again maybe with a new business because it's it's just the way in which you are encouraged to think about your idea which i think is applicable across the board right irrespective of um maybe the, the case studies that are being used in the curriculum. It's that process, that step-by-step -step process that you kind of get a chance to go through that I think applies across industries. What no, no, exactly. And, and there's also a theory component, which is really interesting, you know, understanding the entrepreneurial mindset and what yeah. that really means, mm -hmm. you know, understanding uh, uh, barriers to entry and understanding some of the barriers that we put on ourselves mm -hmm. based on some of the learnings that we've had, maybe some of the learnings even our family, you know, mm -hmm. we, we often uh, bounce those ideas across our family, mm -hmm. but sometimes they could be helpful. Sometimes they could be the hindrance, right? Because right. if they're not thinking outside the box or thinking that this is a great idea, then mm -hmm. they could be holding you back because right. you're listening to them and, and, and they are negative from their own personal experiences. Right. So it's a good way to, again, put it out there, test it, and, uh, and then get some feedback before you make some of the huge investment, mm -hmm. but still getting started towards that entrepreneurial journey. Yeah. Um, and, and you made a really good point that I also want to, uh, to touch on. You know, while this course is, is uh, at the early stages of entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. there are many entrepreneurs existing who can benefit from this course. Yeah. You know, I think that when I've taught uh, this one and uh, uh, Entrepreneurship 101, you know, there are many people who say, oh, I don't need that course. Right. Uh, I've, I've been already there, passed yeah, that, yeah, been there, yeah. done that. But it's a new business, new idea. Mm -hmm. So you almost have to come in with some of that focus towards developing that idea. So I've had many um, that we've taught that have been in business already that have found it still very beneficial yeah. because, again, they're looking through a different set of lenses and they need to start clean and clear and fresh in order to get the thought process going in the right direction. That's right. And I think it's important to note that if you are a seasoned business owner or a serial entrepreneur, while there are certain things that apply across the board, if the product or service that you're providing is different, then you, you more likely your customer's going to be different. Yes. The, the, um, what you have to present to them or how you have to present that product or service is going to have to be different. Mm -hmm. And so going through that process, there's nothing wrong with going through that journey again, right? Because it's all about the learning. You never stop learning, right? Yes. Very true. <laughs> and, and that entrepreneurial journey is just that. It's a journey with all of the turns and all of the different 
forks in the road and all of that. And I just think that these courses that we offer create an opportunity for us to um, prepare ourselves for the changes, right? Mm -hmm. Prepare ourselves to be able to to self-navigate or self-correct when necessary. And I think it's also focused on flexibility and also season the opportunity, right? Because I do think that sometimes, um, and you can talk a little bit about this, is you know, you go away and you travel and you see something, and you're like, this is great. Why don't we have it in Bermuda? Right. And then you come back <laughs> and then the the piece, the question is, why don't we have it in Bermuda? Why don't we have it in Bermuda, right? So how do you answer that question? And I think going through curriculum like this gives you an opportunity to do that because sometimes not everything is for Bermuda. No, very much so. You know, we're a small island. Yeah. So, you know, uh, people who are in business will often have found that there are limitations on territory mm -hmm. for a particular product or service that they'll find with the manufacturer. So there are reasons why some things work and some things won't work. Right. But in order to do that, you need to at least do the research that's required. Mm -hmm. Research is the key to any business, any product. And this is really designed to help people start the research towards how that idea applies mm -hmm. in, our, in, our, in our local market. Right. So very, very true, very important. Mm -hmm. So um, it's eight weeks. It's eight weeks, yes. And it's broken up into modules. Um, so what are some of those things that will be covered within that eight weeks? So the, the course itself is built around a, a book uh, called uh, uh, Who Owns the Ice House? Mm -hmm. um, so the book itself is, is a journey through uh, – Clifton Talbot's uh, experience as a young boy growing up with his uncle, Uncle Cleavy. Mm -hmm. Uncle Cleavy was a, uh, a sharecropper, sorry, during a time in the Mississippi Delta where most everyone around him was sharecroppers. Right. Uncle Cleavy decided to uh, start selling ice. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the, I think it was the early uh, or mid uh, 1900s. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty early, you know, mm -hmm. a little while ago where refrigerators weren't as, uh, as, as they are today. So here's a man, a black man, selling ice uh, at a time where, you know, ice was a pretty valued commodity. Mm -hmm. So it took a little while to get the ice down to the Mississippi and still ice form to be right. able to do that. So there were some logistics involved and there were some things involved that, that involved, you know, getting it out to his customers. Mm -hmm. So he was selling ice, not just to black people, of course, but to anybody that needed ice. Mm -hmm. That was an entrepreneur at yeah. a time that the word itself didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So those eight life lessons that you speak to are, are, are written throughout the book. Mm -hmm. And then we follow that uh, through the eight weeks. Okay. So for example, uh, one of the chapters is the power to choose. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, you know, choice and how that all uh, pertains to entrepreneurship, recognizing opportunities. Yeah. So there's a week about all of that kind of stuff. Ideas into action. Uh, that's, that's a third one, which is, you know, again, some people come with many ideas and then part of this exercise involves figuring out which ideas make the most sense to actually start with. Yeah. You can't do everything at once, so you need yeah. to kind of break that out. And nor nor do nor is every idea the one that people want, right? Exactly. So you might think it's great, but if the rest of the people who will be paying you for your services don't, then we we're not going to do that one. <laughs> we're going to focus on a different one. And and sometimes that feedback helps you to really understand that yes. for sure. Uh the Pursuit of knowledge. So we just talked about research mm -hmm. and understanding product. That that's very important for sure. Creating wealth mm -hmm. and and the kinds of people you surround yourself with, your community, the kinds of people or the kinds of places you want to be in with your uh, products or service. Uh, building your brand. Mm -hmm. That that's always key, right? You know, you have to build that brand and then understand that you know it's not what you think it is, but how people perceive that brand at the end of the day. Right. Uh, and then creating community. The power of persistence, all of that is is uh, uh, covered within this eight weeks. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty cool course because what un what happens is uh, it's an online component. Mm -hmm. uh, so Ice House comes with a portal that everyone registers online and they can do some of that work at home mm -hmm. uh, with, with not just videos of entrepreneurs, uh, successful entrepreneurs, if you will, North American, mm -hmm. that go through uh, sort of their experiences and they apply those experiences throughout the chapters uh and 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 speak to that so it makes it a little bit more 
relatable. I relatable, would think. of yeah, course. Yeah. Um, and then with the theory, so you get all of this online component, and then what we do in class is we go over those same chapters to make sure that what you read and what you uh, had seen is now understood. So, so the two kind of mix mm -hmm. in ways where it, it should leave the individuals with some further testing based on not having the knowledge of, of choice or the knowledge of, of recognizing opportunities, the knowledge of creating wealth, et cetera, you mm -hmm. know, to how these things work. So I've, I've always found it to be a really cool course mm -hmm. um, and looking forward to uh, presenting it this time around. So one of the options you said creating wealth, and I think that's important because I do think that sometimes we can think small because mm -hmm. we're in a small place. Mm -hmm. um, and it may be that I just want to do this thing because I like it. I'm kind of doing it on the side. And I think that whole idea around creating wealth is what is it that you can do that will allow you to create enough wealth for yourself, maybe even for your family, um, and which you can now turn into a full-time situation, right? Versus this little side hustle that you have on the side. And so having conversations or thinking about these eight life lessons allows you to kind of put, put your business plan together, if you will, right? Because you're charting this course to say, okay, this is what I need to do in order to ensure that I have the ability for this job or this, this business that I'm creating to create wealth and maybe generational wealth for me, really. And I think that's a big topic that maybe not everybody thinks about when they're starting up a business. It, it is. And this particular uh, chapter is, is interesting because uh, in as I mentioned, it's it's based on a Canadian slash American model. Yeah. Um, so you know when they talk about creating wealth, they break down a person's income and and then shows you know how that works with expenses. So some of that wealth that you're creating may involve some of the changes of your lifestyle yeah. even before the business gets added to that, right? Because you know I mean there are some there are some people that just live beyond their means. Mm. And, and no matter what they do, they, they can never quite catch up. Mm -hmm. Well, that may not have to do with the business. That may have to do with the social life that needs to be adjusted in order to afford the business. Ah. So, you know, we, it, we, it touches on all that stuff yeah, and yeah. in ways that uh, is broken down in layman's terms. It's, it's pretty simple. And, you know, one of the things that's, that's, that's also important to recognize is that it's a safe space, mm -hmm. right? So we teach this course live, and we teach it live. We've done it a number of ways, but this particular course will be taught live. Mm -hmm. So it's a safe space. And one of the things that I find most interesting about courses, particularly courses in entrepreneurship, is that many people have this thing about ideas that they want to hold on to yes. it so tight, really thinking and believing that it's brand new to everyone in Bermuda or everyone that may be... Uh, interested and they're holding on to it so tight that they're afraid to speak to their idea mm -hmm. and and use the class as part of that uh experience of, of growth and development because you need feedback yes so to get some of that feedback from some of the people in the in the course may be some of the first feedback that a person has had as they introduce this idea mm -hmm. so i i point that out because uh you know not everybody um, even if somebody has the same idea as you, it's very seldom that you will find that that idea is going to be run in the same way. Right. So if somebody the execution. wants execution, execution yeah. is so important. You know, a shoe store isn't just a shoe store; it's a shoe store. Mm -hmm. There are a number of ways to do that, and I think it's important for people to say, "Well, how can I take this idea, and what can I do to do it better?" Yeah. It, it, it's not necessarily about having the first and only. It's about making sure that your idea is being done in a way that is uh, appealing to your clients mm -hmm. and solving a problem. Right. And I would say, like, every time I think about that, I always think about um, at the time I heard Richard Branson speak. And mm -hmm. he was, his, his whole shtick, right? He's a billionaire. And he got there by not introducing something new. He just looked at what was currently out there and said, I think I could do that better. Yes. That's what he did. That's exactly what he did. <laughs> and so in some instances, he got it right. Like he tried to do Coke better than Coke does Coke. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. didn't work. That didn't work. <laughs> we right. don't know any Virgin Cokes. But he has a Virgin Atlantic. He did Virgin Atlantic Records. Now he has the Plains and all of that. 
Um, and so I that to me is a key element and it speaks to what you're talking about, about you don't have to hold your idea so close to your chest and that you get paralyzed because you're not getting the necessary feedback that you need to actually execute, right? Because yes. an idea is nothing without execution. And so I think in these course settings or in these class people, like you say, this is your chance. You are surrounded by people who are obviously thinking they have this entrepreneurial mindset. They have ideas of their own. And so now is your time to test it, to see how people are receiving it. And who knows, maybe you can find a partner in the room. You can get um, help to kind of... Um, to, to, to ensure that your idea is focusing or something mm -hmm. that other people want. You're getting all of this opportunity for feedback that is invaluable. Very much so. And I think um, for those who have taken it, I think they realize it uh, yeah. at some point within during, the course. Yeah, during it, right? Um, <laughs> but I, I always like to point that out because, you know, in, in a lot of ways there are many people who some of those who are watching this or listening to this would, mm -hmm. would say, you know what, that may not be applicable to me, but I have a nephew or I have a exactly. grandson or I have a sister that, that really Needs should be it. taking this yeah. course because they have this idea and they've been talking about it forever and haven't done it. Right. Well, it's only you that's going to do it. So sometimes, you know, it's a way to give them a little push by, mm -hmm. by making sure that they know that this course is available. Right. You know, sometimes I've had people just sign them up. You know, here's your early Christmas present or your, your birthday gift because right. you know that this person needs to take this course or should be in this course. And and there have been some, you know, really interesting uh, feedback from some that actually got signed up that way through yeah. someone else. Yeah. And, uh, and, and very grateful in the end that they were pushed towards it. Because, again, you know, for some people, it, it's so new to speak aloud, mm -hmm. that just by being in the course, that's a first step yes. to some of the uh, independence uh, that they may be looking for. Yeah, I think I think it's important. I mean, um, I know people always say, you know, it's my idea, somebody's gonna steal it. But I can assure you that most ideas are not new. And secondly, no one can probably deliver the way you would want to deliver it, right? Especially if it's something that you're really passionate about, right? I, I may think it's a great idea, but I don't share your passion. So the minute something goes wrong or the course changes, I'm like, yeah, okay, been there. I'm I'm over it, right? Um, so I I would like to encourage people who are considering it to to take the step. This is like the first step in actually um, going down that road. And if you're already a business owner, you already have a business, there's nothing like education and, and making sure that you are crossing your T's and dotting your I's and all of that. So there's tremendous opportunity, I think, in just being around like-minded people, right? We always hear feedback of people like, that was the best part of the course is talking with other entrepreneurs because it can be a lonely road. Definitely. And, and uh, you know, that's one of the uh, things that, that I've always tried to include in addition to the testimonials mm -hmm. uh, that you'll see in the videos that come with the course, you know, we always like to have a few local entrepreneurs yes. join us and, and speak to their journey. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, there are some subtleties that are a little different in Bermuda. Yes, there and, are. And, and, you know, those should be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, at the end of the day, it, it's there's no two journeys alike. Mm -hmm. But you can't, I can't say finish a journey. You, you have to start that journey to see where it goes. That's right. That's right. And the worst thing to me is not taking the journey. No. That's worse than somebody stealing your idea. It's like to not have even attempted it when you've always wanted to. That. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, back to the whole stealing part. Yeah. You know, we, we often have people that uh, will will come back weeks later and say, I just read about something in the paper yeah. that looked just like what I wanted yeah. to do. Yeah. Well, that's because that person actually kept it moving and executed. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, this whole thing about worrying about people in, in a negative way is, is, is almost counterproductive. Yeah. You want to figure out what you're going to do to improve your situation. How are you going to do it better? Be like Richard Branson. Do it better, right? Or do it differently. Yeah, and, and as you've pointed out, right, Richard Branson had some big ideas, but some of these ideas don't have to be no, big. They could they be don't. very simple things. That, you know, most most entrepreneurs solve simple problems. That's right. So so many of the ideas that people uh, actually 
do are things that do exist. Yeah. You know, whether it be a hair salon that you're going to run a little differently or better, mm -hmm. you feel, than, than somebody else. A barbershop, you know, as I say, retail. Retail, you know, can be done so many different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, we have online stuff. We have marketing. So whatever the idea is, there is uh, lessons that apply to it. Yeah, and I think not just, like you said, the, it's called the eight life lessons. Yes. So it's not even just for your business, but I think uh, understanding that these can be applied to your life. And so the whole idea is think like an entrepreneur is changing your mindset and the way you deal with or address problems, I think. So it's less about saying, oh, I hate this or this is this. We don't have this in Bermuda and more about, well, What's the solution? No, very much so. Because I think one of the things that, that I find always interesting is the fact that, again, somebody may have a different idea mm -hmm. who is in this course, but they may have some of the same fears. Fears of money, fears yeah. of not having enough time. You know, you got kids, so when do you make the time? How do you, uh, you know, how do you afford this with your kids? Yeah. Well, everyone deals with those. The older you get, the more challenges you have, right? So you can always find reasons not to do it. Yes. This is really based on recognizing that, yes, we have challenges as individuals. And, and you know, you may think that you want to start this like, you know, you're like, with, with 10 employees. Yeah. Well, the reality is it may not start that big. It may be just you. And recognizing that you have to put on the work, you mm -hmm. have to set the tone for whatever your business is, is, is extremely important. Um, and, and again, just getting started. Yeah. I think one of the things I, that you said, it, which is important, is fear, right? I do think fear can be crippling. Um, and fear sometimes is where ideas go to die, right? You're just so crippled by the fact that what if I fail? What if it doesn't work? And going back to something you said earlier, by taking the course, it gives you the opportunity to kind of work through that fear. Right. You're dissecting this idea that you have mm -hmm. and you're creating our opportunity. You're giving yourself eight weeks to test to even see if it's a, a, a thing. Can this thing work? Right. Without the huge expense, maybe of having to purchase all the stuff, bring all the stuff in. We get to kind of take our time take our um baby steps to decide if this is something that can actually work and then at the end of it you're like oh wait people would actually pay me for this thing sure and you know and i guess that's the point right you know this is just eight weeks yeah for 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 real life and entrepreneurs that's a spit in the bucket right but it's a very important time because it it, it measures this that time of the learning right yes. you know when when people just walk in without taking some of the courses by no means you know if that's if you're or if you're fine with what you've learned and you're ready to move forward then great but some people need a little extra push yeah. so signing up with the course actually gives you a push because it's once a week uh it'll be i believe it was on tuesdays yeah so tuesday evenings from 6 to eight fifteen ish um for eight weeks straight so that way you're actually scheduling time to work on your plan, scheduling time to work on your idea, mm -hmm. and and sharing some of those thoughts and and uh, and and opportunities uh, with the class and and you know with yourself mm -hmm. um, throughout that period. So again, it, it it's <clears throat> it's very easy to come in to uh, have a meeting at BEDC and and talk to one of your officers about your idea. And leave that meeting and not go any further right. for days, months, even years. It happens. The course encourages you to keep moving. Yes. And I think that's a good way to get through that first phase. And as you say, you know, uh, uh, become a little bit more familiar mm -hmm. with some of the opportunities that BEDC offer in other areas. Yeah. And I think opportunity is key because I do think that when you travel and you see stuff and then you come back to Bermuda, it may not be a fit for Bermuda, but what is, how do you identify opportunities that work for this environment? And then once you determine what that is, is it possible for it to work in another place, right? So how do you go through that process? What is the thought process that you have to go through to be able to identify and then seize that opportunity? Yes. <clears throat> no, key, and and, I, and it all takes time, mm -hmm. and it takes energy, and it takes passion, yes. and, it, and it takes that person to get off the couch and just do it. And just do it. Like Nike said, If I mean, that slogan is so true, and I think to not do it is where you're like kicking yourself, Yes. right? So that person that 
goes and reads the paper and is like, dang it, I had that business idea. Why didn't I? Yeah, why didn't you? No. And it, why can't you? Mm -hmm. That Just because they did it doesn't mean you can't still do it. You know, entrepreneurship is not easy. If people are looking to entrepreneurship as a sort of a a, a quick way out to no. be in control of whatever, no. you know, no, it, it doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. It is a lot of time and effort. It's probably going to be harder than the job you have right now. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing it with uh, something that you're really keen about, uh, I, I was listening to a show this morning where they were talking about um, not just about uh, passion, mm -hmm. but the gift and then the persistence. Those are the other parts that go along with it, right? Yep. You know, just because you're passionate doesn't mean that other people think the same way. Right. But you have to start from somewhere and it, it helps to start with something that you think is a good idea and something that you enjoy doing. That's right. So I am excited about it, of course, to have you back, right? <laughs> Even if it's just for eight weeks. Um, but back on, on BDC Grounds, uh, sharing your experience as an entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur, um, with all the businesses and everything, but most recently with Mona Lisa Cruises, and using that to kind of help shape some of these eight life lessons that people will have an opportunity to go through um, during the eight weeks with you. So again, September 18th is the start date. You can go online to bdc.bm to register. Um, there is a fee for the course, but it's worth every penny because at the end of it, hopefully you have this blueprint for this business that you can now create um, and that could potentially be your wealth builder, right, mm -hmm. um, for your future and for the future of your, your family. So if you have questions or if you need further information, please log on to our website at bdc.bm. You can email info at bdc.bm. And Ray, he is a consultant now, so <laughs> you can email him <laughs> at bdc.bm. But if you reach out to us, we can definitely put you in touch with him if necessary. But great to have you here, Ray. Great to see you. Um, as always, and we're looking forward to September 18th. Yes, me too. So, uh, again, if, if this course isn't for you, then you know somebody who, who should yeah. sign up. Uh, it, you know, we only do these a couple times a year. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, all of a sudden, it's not about planning for 2023, mm -hmm. but 2024. Mm -hmm. And that's what people have to understand. As I, as I mentioned, it takes a while to pull some of the logistics into reality. Mm -hmm. So Especially when you think about Bermuda, yeah. Christmas is just, you know, was it five months away? Yeah. And uh, and then the next summer season, if it's a tourist or business, businesses, is less than a year away already as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's not too late to start. It's, it's, it's actually a really good time to start thinking about uh, the year ahead and, mm -hmm. and how you're going to change, I guess, your life. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you for minding your business with me today. Thank you for coming. Thanks and for having me. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm here all the time. I right? know, I know. <laughs> and then remember, if you don't mind your business. Who will? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Mind Your Business with me, your host, Jamila Lodge. Tune in next week, Thursday at 4 p.m. Because if you don't mind your business, who will? Mind Your Business is brought to you by BEDC. Bermuda business starts here.